grandchildren are over here this afternoon. Parents have gone Christmas shopping. It would be so much more easier if they let me read to them. Ah! Speaking of reading. The House of the Wooden Santas by Kevin Major. 18 days to Christmas. In the early hours of the morning, Jesse heard the wind howl. He could picture a wild storm, gust of snow so fierce that the school would never open. After one especially loud howl, Jesse sprang to the window only to find there was not a flake of snow in the air. Disgusting. What was the use of a stupid wind without any snow? Forecast calls for a perfect day, came his mother's voice above the sound of the radio in the kitchen. Some chance, Jesse muttered. He strolled to the kitchen, knowing it was no use to look sick again. His mother would have him out the door and straight to the doctor's office. How's your tummy, she asked. Better. Knew it, she patted his head. Terrific. Breakfast was cinnamon toast burnt around the edges and orange juice that had been mixed with too many cans of water. Sorry about that, she said. I don't know where my mind is this morning. Outer space, Jesse said, and his mother didn't even notice. All during breakfast, Jesse expected to see a new Santa to pop up. His eyes wandered around the kitchen, but there was nothing. After breakfast, he took a long way back to his bedroom through the rest of the house. Nothing there either. He was tempted to peek into the workroom, but then his mother might think he actually looked forward to her Santas. All the way to school, his own mind was in outer space. In his classroom, he avoided looking at Jonathan for as long as possible. When he finally did glance his way, it was because Jonathan had not uttered a word. Jonathan's head hung low and his eyes were not bulging from the math book in front of him. The book was open to the wrong page. At recess and lunch hour, Jonathan kept to himself and said he had other more important things to do. When they practiced for the Christmas concert, Jonathan knew every one of his lines and didn't laugh once. Weird, very weird, Jesse said to himself. When the bell rang at the end of the day, he and Jonathan went their separate ways. And still Jonathan had not said a word to him. Jesse's mother picked him up and they were off to the grocery store. At the checkout counter, she discovered she didn't have enough money with her and had to put three cans back on the shelves. Still in outer space, thought Jesse. At four o'clock, they pulled into the driveway of Jonathan's house. As they started up the path, Jesse's stomach tightened. Jonathan's mother met them at the back door. Come on in. I'm just this minute put on the kettle. Jonathan was sitting at the kitchen table doing his homework and looking just as serious as he had in school. You boys go play hockey in the basement, his mother said. Jonathan disappeared down the stairs as soon as the words were out of her mouth. Jesse looked at his mother. He could see he was expected to go. He headed to the stairs and almost ran into a man with a walking stick. Oh, sorry, Jesse stammered. It's okay. The man wasn't pleased, Jesse could tell, even though there was something like a smile on his face. This is Jonathan's dad. Oh, Jesse said. He didn't mean to sound surprised. He was thinking, is this who Jonathan is always bragging about? He limped past Jesse. He sure didn't look in any shape to drive a snowmobile or play hockey. Partway down the stairs, Jesse heard his mother's voice in the kitchen. Glad to meet you. Michelle tells me you're interested in wood carving. Jesse stopped to listen. 
I think would be, I guess, there's not much to do when you're sick of watching television. I'll be happy to give you a few pointers if you want. It's not my idea, but of course, you know that. Jesse continued down the stairs. Jonathan handed him a hockey stick. Fell off the ladder a few months ago and busted his hip, Jonathan muttered. Had to get a steel pin in it. He's pretty mad with himself for what happened. Is he getting better? Not like it should. The two of them played floor hockey. They took turns being goalie and taking shots on each other. Jonathan didn't brag even when he scored on Jesse. And not once did he mention about not believing in anything. His mother brought them fudge cookies and milk, and they sat on the bottom steps and talked hockey, just like he remembered doing with his friends in the city. When Jonathan asked him his favorite team in the NHL, he told him the Leafs, and Jonathan went, yes, under his breath. Then he said, my dad said we might fly up and see an NHL game. But I guess that won't happen now. My mom said we might, but I guess maybe we can't afford it. <clears throat> when it was finally time for Jesse to leave, he asked his mom, just five minutes more? As soon as Jesse got home that evening, he kicked off his boots and ran to his bedroom to dig out his binder of hockey cards. He ran right into the new Santa a Santa on skates, holding a hockey stick on top of his bedroom dresser. Yes! Into the house of wooden Santas, his mother declared. Skates hockey Santa, weaving down the ice, across the red line, over the blue line, past the defense. He shoots! He scores! What a guy, she says. And he's going to win him the Stanley Cup. Jesse held Santa over his head like a trophy, pretending to skate around the room and shouting, Yes! Yes! agreed his mother. Finally! Yes! See you tomorrow.